And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Rider Review Podcast, brought to you by 13K Productions. After a 52-6, to I believe it was, beatdown of the Saskatchewan Rough Riders by the Winnipeg Blue Bombers at the Banjo Bowl. Uh, Tyson? What up? How are you? How's everybody doing? Thanks for uh, for listening once again. Uh, it was a <laughs> demoralizing beat down, but uh, I'm sure we'll get to that. What are your thoughts? Um, overall, uh, we did what we could with what we were given offensively, at least. Um, mm-hmm. You know, when you're going up against guys like Adam Big Hill, Willie Jefferson, Diedrich Nichols, Cram D, like what, and, and you have a backup quarterback in, you know, you can only do so much, right? Um, yeah. Defensively, uh, as I said before we uh, started recording here, you know, it to me, it looked like a one-off game. You don't see that from Jason Shivers very often. Right. Um, but as you mentioned before, it's, he has to take accountability for that. Um uh let's uh let's start with the quarterback play here um and i guess we can even talk about the quarterback play by both teams um just your thoughts on dola gala's performance and even um uh patterson's performance too there when he came in oh do we lose him oh there do we lose you Hello? All right. Well, we're uh, experiencing some technical difficulties, uh, but I'll go ahead. I'll give my thoughts on uh, the... I'm here. Oh, there we go. We got you. <laughs> I'm here. Right. Uh, I It was cutting in and out. Uh, I believe you asked thoughts on Dola Gala. Uh, obviously not his, his best game, but... Um, Again, he, he didn't uh, make stupid mistakes, really. He made mistakes that the defense forced him to do and, and possibly our offensive playbook. Um, I, I thought he played okay, you know, like we discussed off the air. I haven't rewatched it. I don't rewatch a, a 45-point blowout typically. So, um, yeah, I thought he was okay. He's the least of our problems, right? That That loss has nothing to do with him. So I'm cool. I don't know. Yeah, um, I agree with you. Um, you're playing behind a patched up offensive line, uh, mm-hmm. going up against. Let's, I mean, frankly, let's just say it, the best defensive line in the league, right? Unreal. Um, you know what are you supposed to do? You know, um, and he was left out there for for a while, um, to get the reps, and that's what you do. That's what you do with your third string quarterback, quite frankly, and. Mm-hmm. They gave Shea Patterson some reps, uh, which I thought was really nice. Uh, it was mm-hmm. nice to actually see him running around the field, too. Um, I don't know why, but uh, that's always been something that I've liked seeing from a quarterback. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it's nice to see. And I guess there's people um, now calling for uh, – let, let's transition here. There's people uh, calling for a change at uh, – Head coach after this, people are saying that, you know, oh, fire Dickinson again. Those conversations have come up. And a name that's been brought into the conversation is Anthony Calvillo because of the quarterbacks. Mm-hmm. Um, just, your, just your thoughts on that whole conversation coming back up. Uh, well, you knew it would, so that's no surprise. Um, yeah, short of a, I don't know, short of a great cup uh, appearance, I don't think Dickie will be back, but that doesn't mean we can't make some noise yet this year. Um, Craig Dickinson is not going anywhere this year, period. That was yeah. solidified after the Labor Day Classic victory. He's not going anywhere this year. Um, now you can you can suggest, and, and, and it's not a wrong suggestion, that he will be gone in the offseason barring some sort of uh, minor miracle. But uh, he's certainly not going anywhere this year, so let's get behind him. Let's support him. Uh, we still got to win. We still got, you know, a fair, a fair jag of the season left to to play here. So let's get behind the guy. I'm not a, 
his hugest, uh, his biggest supporter by any means, but let's get behind him. And as far as I haven't heard that, buddy, I haven't heard the AC uh, comments or rumors yet, but I want no part of that. AC <laughs> has, has failed numerous times as an OC in this league. Um, he's one of the greatest quarterbacks I've ever seen play the CFL game, period. Yeah. Like I grew up with him just destroying us week in and week out. He was unbelievable. Uh, no, 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 thank you. I would rather have Craig Dickinson. <laughs> So yeah. <laughs> that's about all I got to say on that. But it's good discussion. I love it. Like, I love the discussion when names come up, right? It's cool. Yeah. Um, and then I guess back to the performance here on field. Um, our skill position guys really uh, struggled this week. Um, and, again, I say, you know, quarterback playing behind past offensive line, you're not going to get as much time to throw. Um, yeah. I think Sean Bain Jr. only got one touch. and Yeah. Schaefer Baker, I mean, yeah, at the beginning of the game, he was thrown two, three times, but he dropped the what should have been a touchdown pass. Quite frankly, I think he got to catch that. Yeah. I don't know if you saw that at the beginning of the game. Uh, yeah, I just did. your thoughts on our receivers' performances? Uh, it, it's really tough to to blame the receivers in a game like that. Uh, Jake didn't have much time, and and. And when he was afforded a little bit of time by our old line, um, the Winnipeg cover linebacker and DB's cornerbacks uh, were light blue. Um, in my opinion, they have the best defensive secondary in the league. I believe I said that last week. And yeah. uh, no, I, I, I don't blame I, I don't blame the uh, the receivers at all. It's uh, it comes with the territory. It happens. We got to move on. Um. And then uh, let's, let's really quickly talk the offensive line. Like I said, um, you had backups in. Um, and I believe from what I heard, it was three sacks given up. Um, and what I got to say about that is that's only three sacks. When you have two new guys coming in and people rotating against the, Win like, against the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. So for what it's worth, I think the offensive line did about as good as they probably could could have done right um yeah. and mind you the offensive line on both sides like even like winnipeg's offensive line there is no arguing when brady Oliveira goes for over 200 yards rushing i think it was or, or either i think 200 yards of total offense totally. or something like that yeah 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 um just your thoughts on the offensive line play in the game in general i haven't rewatched it like i said to you off here i'm not going to rewatch a 45 point blowout or whatever it was uh, that that would just uh, put fuel on the fire. But uh, uh, I thought the O line did, you know, as well as we could expect. Like, no excuses. We were going to get beat no matter what happened on on Saturday there. But uh, you can't lose two starting O linemen and just chuck two guys in and, and figure you're going to be all right uh, against the number one defense in the in the league. Um, I think they did as well as we, we could have hoped for. So uh, I, I, I don't chuck a huge amount of blame on them. Um, be interesting to see if Philip Blake uh, progresses uh, practicing further into this week. And uh, Jordan Tucker, the guy that we brought back, he uh, was a backup in Winnipeg and uh, spent some time in training camp and impressed a few people. We released him. Uh, he was later brought back three weeks ago, and we ish, and we haven't heard a peep about him. So mm -hmm. I'd be interested to to hear the status of Jordan Tucker, and uh, and hopefully we can get Philip Blake. I don't expect him to play this week, um, but <laughs> you know this kind of leads leads me into my little uh, frustrating points I had here. Why the heck aren't we practicing today? You obviously give them the day off on Sunday. That's that's a given. That's what has to happen. Um, yeah. But why the heck weren't we out there? Like, even a, a walkthrough type of thing, watching film, and uh, why didn't we have those boys in there today? That, uh, I don't know. Like, it, it's easy for us to jump uh, jump on Craig or whatever, but I, I'm sure there's reasons that we're not we're not privy to, obviously. But mm -hmm. uh, I, I'd love to hear an explanation. I'd love to hear someone at, someone in the media 
ask why we weren't practicing today. We just got blown out by 45 points and we're not practicing today. Like that's, uh, that's frustrating to the outsider, to the, to the lay person like, like you and I. Yeah. Um, and I, yeah, I, I heard that too. I was, I'm, I'm listening to, uh, the, the green zone shout out 980 CJME, um, yep. on the way home here. And it's, I hear they're not out practicing today and I, I just about spit my coffee out. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm just baffled. You know, like you said, uh, after a 45 point blowout, there is no reason you should not be on that field. I get it. Nope. Yes. Give them Sunday off, but you have to be out there, especially when you have, a new Edmonton team. And I say new because they are playing yeah. with something with, with a fire under them that we really haven't seen before. And yeah. quite frankly, they, we need to be practicing every single day that we can. A hundred percent. And it's a Friday game too. Like I understand giving them two days off if we play on a Sunday, right? I get that. This is a Friday game. This is a short week and we're not in mosaic practicing that I mean, they kind of, I believe they have to tell us when they're practicing. So if yeah. it's not made available through the media, then no, we did not practice today. And gosh darn dude, like that is frustrating. I don't know. Yeah. And I'm, I'm spending my hard earned money uh, on that game. I'm going to that game. And if the riders lose that game, what all hell is going to break loose here in Saskatchewan and pretty much for every single rider fan all over the world. Um, what, what, like realistically, what, what does Craig Dickinson, Jason Shivers, um, like what, do, what does everybody say after losing to the Edmonton Elks in a, in a should win game? It's, I'm not going to say must win because it might not even be, a, I, I, I wouldn't say it's a must win. It's a should win game. No, it's a should win. It's not a must win. We're still in great shape. Like, despite the blowout, we're still in terrific shape. We're still two games up on our closest competitor in the West Division for the third place. And that's not even taking into account uh, the crossover in which we have to finish above Hamilton and Edmonton. So we're in great shape. Um, I'll tell you right now, I'm not big into predictions, but I I fully expect a victory uh, on, uh, on Friday evening there. Uh, the Esks, sorry, the Alks are uh, a much improved team. Trey Ford, he's got great energy. Jonesy has the boys playing a little bit. Um, I loved seeing that uh, that tight victory against Calgary the other night. That was awesome. Oh, yeah. That made my weekend. I was more excited about that victory over the Stamps than I than I was uh, choked about the loss to the Bombers. So um, I, I, I don't think it's something we're really going to have to worry about. And uh, Coach Shive is not going to have to worry about because we're going we're gonna to come out with a victory on Friday. And uh, and we'll start this ball rolling all over again, right? Yeah, you know, like like you said, as we say here, um, anybody but Calgary, right? You know? That's um, right. And always, even anybody always. but Winnipeg. But, you know, that, that didn't go too well. Um, <laughs> but it's, uh, you know, you like to have, uh, to me it looks like, you know, Edmonton is kind of that, you know, shield that we have there, they're fighting off the, the Stampeders to keep us in a good position. And it, if yeah. we go in and beat, if, if we take out Edmonton, it's, it, it's, it's a good look on us. And really we're, I think that it, I don't even think that I know that puts us in much better position. Um, yeah. I just want to touch on the, on the defense here um, just as a whole, because you can't really single out any, any portion of it. Just your thoughts on the defensive play. Um, what is the worst adjective I can pick off the top of my head here? We're good for one uh, F bomb, man. Good for one F bomb. <laughs> <laughs> I I chuck a few of those at work, so I'm gonna try and keep this clean. Um, it was extremely <laughs> disappointing. Our defense is a good defense that does not shake in my faith any. Uh, Jason Shivers is still a decent coach. He's a young coach. Like, let's not make uh, make him out to be something he's not. He's still a young coach, and he's learning. I still have faith in Jason Shivers. I still have faith in our defense. Um, but that was, you know, just entirely putrid. Uh, we couldn't stop them no matter what we did. Um, honestly, I'm not sure there's another team in the league, and that includes BC and Toronto, that would have had any more success than us 
on Banjo Bowl Day in a sold out uh, IG field. I, I don't think those either two teams would have done any better than us. So uh, my faith is not shaken in our defense. Um, Deontay Williams had a bad game. Uh, I've heard a little bit of chat here that possibly, you know, maybe some fans want to see Tremaine Washington in there. And what oh, yeah, is percent Washington's a veteran. You, there's not going to be a big drop off or uh, on the other hand, you're not going to have a big surge with Washington. It's, it's just a one for one in my opinion. Um, but when you lose by 45 points, let's make the one for one change. I got no problem with that. Yeah. Um, I 100% agree from you. Um, you know, you, we, we haven't seen him anywhere, like nothing, nothing since the signing. Right. And yeah, that's, that's just, you know, you, you bring him in for what? Just to have him ride the bench for what? Yeah. How long has it been? 15 weeks? Yeah, like, well, whatever. He's making he's making vet minimum, you know, so yeah. it's not a big deal financially. But uh, I, they say change sake, uh, but I, I'd like to see it. Yeah, yeah. Um, so... I guess uh, yeah. Now, now, uh, now that we're done with uh, this game, we gotta. I think um, you know, after a forty-five point blowout, we gotta we gotta look on to next week. Can't really spend too much time dwelling on that uh, because you know, for our sanity yeah. and the sanity of Rider Nation, um, what does this offense have to do <laughs> to be successful against the Edmonton Elks on Friday? Ah, yeah, that was the line of scrimmage. Uh, that's it. Uh, our receivers, we know they can get separation. Uh, that's not on Edmonton's defense. That's not a slight on their secondary. We know our receivers. We have the holes. Uh, the boys can get separation. I'm not worried about that. We have to establish the run up front um, and and get the, the attitude. Go on our O line, whoever it is on the tackles, you know, Eric Cloft and Brandon Council, uh, God willing, you know, Philip Blake or, or some. But uh, yeah, we have to establish the line of scrimmage. We just got completely bullied by Winnipeg. And uh, I know for a fact, while well, you played O line, that's embarrassing when you get bullied like that by a team. Like 100%. you don't forget something like that. So yeah. So I expect the boys to come out fired up and. Uh, Start shoving Edmonton's uh, defensive line downhill. Keep shoving them downhill. Keep moving two yards at a time. You know what I mean? So uh, if, I think if we can establish that line of scrimmage, that does so much uh, on the back end for our receivers. And um, I, I'm honestly, it's kind of crazy how confident I am uh, coming off such a blowout. But uh, I, I got a really good feeling. I, I think we're going to come out firing on all cylinders. And uh, I'm really looking forward to it, buddy. Yeah, um, and I guess uh, something I wanted to say, uh, get you got to play Thomas Bertrand Houdon. Have to, after what he's yeah. shown. You know, J-Mo's not giving you as much as he should be giving you. Sit him for a half, see see what Bertrand Houdon can do. You can tell he he's not afraid of going and getting mm-hmm. and taking the ball through those dirty, dirty areas between the tackles and yeah. the, the guards and – you have to you have to give him give him a shot. I like the kid. I, I think I think uh, I think he's proved enough on specials and, and his little uh, play here or two on offense. I, I think he's warranted a you know a, a more significant role, I guess. I mean let's keep in mind he's a rookie and a Canadian rookie at that, but uh, I'm all for it. I'm all for it. Uh, giving that kid the ball a few more times, you know, give him another five handoffs. Yeah. Um, so shifting over, um, let's look at this from a defensive perspective. What does this defense have to do to um, secure a victory at home? Well, our secondary has to play better, obviously. That, that's a given, right? I mean, and we have a good secondary. Deontay Williams is a rookie and he's been, you know, kind of hit and miss the last two games. But if that's our biggest problem, we're in good shape. Um my my number one prim, primary objective would be to get pressure on the quarterback. Um, now, <laughs> that comes with a caveat here because Trey Ford is not a, a quarterback you want to put pressure on, I don't think. Yeah. 
I, I think you want to, uh, to scrape out wide and make sure that that fell is contained because he's a firecracker. He's fun to watch. And I, I honestly don't see him developing into a starting quarterback. But at this point, he is fun to watch. Let's keep him. We're not going to keep him in the pocket. Let's keep yeah. him behind the, the line, line of scrimmage. Scrimmage, Right? Yeah. And uh, if we can if we scrape him out, keep him running east-west as, as opposed to south, and I think we have a terrific chance. I really do. Yeah. Yeah. Um... I think you got to keep a QB spy out there um, every single play. Yeah. Because you never know what Maybe. he's going to do. Right. Maybe. Um, yeah. So just really, and and hold them to under 20 points. Because if, if you hold the Edmonton Elks under 20 points, um, yeah. there is not a lot that they can really do. Right. No. Um, yeah. Um, so, uh, so, some CFL news. Um, uh, Darnell Sankey, former Saskatchewan Rough Rider and um, XFL champion, mm -hmm. uh, has signed with the Montreal Alouettes. Your thoughts on that signing? I think it's fantastic. I'm glad to have him back in the league. I don't want people to lose sight of how important a player he was on the field last year for us. He set our... Saskatchewan Rough Rider uh, single season tackle record last year, um, which is not surprising. But it was surprising who he beat, David Albright, which yeah. is a little little bit before my time, but not much. And uh, I was shocked that he had our tackle record. And Darnell Sankey broke that last year, and uh, and he, in conjunction with Larry Dean, our boy. Um, became only the second linebacker duo in CFL history to have 100 tackles each, uh, which might be a testament to how bad our defense was, I guess, if the tackling all day, right? But yeah. um, Darnell Sankey is a fantastic human being. He did so much in the community last year. It was unreal what he did. And, and he's not getting paid to go out, whatever. Um, he did a lot for our community. He's a great man, and I'm happy to see him back in the CFL. And it's it's possibly due to Larry Dean's career resurgence uh, yeah. that he's not back in Saskatchewan, right? Because you're never, ever replacing Larry Dean. So, um, yeah, I, I'm glad to see Darnell back. He's a great guy. Um, yeah, I agree with you. That's something you, we love to see. Um, yeah. You know, when you have a community guy and who, who can also perform on the field, yeah, um, yeah, exactly. any team that gets that is lucky yeah. to have it. You know, and um, props to Montreal for bringing him, bringing him in, and it must yeah. have been a team friendly contract, right? You know, I guess to bring him in this late they, in the season. Oh, well, and they just shot, signed uh, Sean Lennon what yeah. four weeks ago or whatever. That defense so, is uh, scary. Yeah, they. <laughs> They've got some burners out there, man. I, I won't comment on the salary cap, and I'm not sure how all these guys fit in there. But, <laughs> but whatever, who cares? We wouldn't care about the salary cap if it was us signing Darnell. So good for them. Exactly. Um, anything you had to uh, mention? Uh, not too much. Uh, haven't had time to, do, to dig into too much, Jaden. But uh, Greg Ellingson, phenomenal receiver in the CFL over the years. Came in for one game, his first game of the year in Montreal last uh, Saturday, Sunday. Mm -hmm. And uh, and he's hurt again and back on the sixth game. So I'm afraid we've seen the last of Greg Allenson in the CFL, which is too bad because uh, he's a great receiver, great possession receiver. He's had a long storied career in this league. And uh, it sucks if, in fact, he has to go out like this, you know? Yeah, it's, you know, I... I've been watching him. You know, obviously he's he, he's been here for a while in the in the CFL. Um, yeah. You know, you've heard stories uh, of him. I'm pretty sure he played a little bit of quarterback in in college, right, yeah. or university. Um, it great guy, great player, but um, yeah. it's always tough to see anybody go out in that circumstance, right? That um, sucks. Like these guys put so much into it, like 20 years of their life into it. And you hate to see them go out on anything other than their, their own terms. You know what I mean? Yeah. 
yeah, it's it's tough. Um, yeah. Uh, I got another one here. So I love this. The CFL has neg lists, right? Negotiation lists. Yeah. And I wish they would be available all the time, but they're not. Uh, so I think it's four times a year. I could be wrong. Um, the CFL allows or mandates um, the CFL teams to reveal 10 players on, on each of their negotiation lists, which is mm -hmm. great. It's fantastic. You see a bunch of up and comers from U S colleges. You see some has bands, you see all kinds of stuff. It's great. I love that. I, the, one of my favorite things about sports is following transactions. I don't know why. I'm yeah. Kind of a nerd, kind of a nerd that way, but whatever. Um, so the riders obviously um, revealed 10 players on their negotiation list. And one of those was quarterback Jordan Talamu. Talamu. Mm -hmm. I'm not positive how you say that, but I'm certainly familiar with his name. He's bounced around three, four, five practice rosters. Um, preseason games, that type of thing in the NFL. Uh, he comes from the SEC. He's a starting quarterback for Ole Miss. Uh, he's played the last year or two in the XFL and USFL. And um, he was brought into the Minnesota Vikings training camp, and he didn't make the team. And uh, we have him on our neg list. And to me, that guy, I haven't, I'm not a huge college fan, but I'm familiar mm -hmm. with that name. And uh, he has got CFL written all over him, dude. You watch some of his uh, highlight packs and that. Man, he's he's a CFLer. Now, whether he wants to to do that or you know exhaust any last tiny bit of hope he has uh, for gaining an NFL roster, who knows, right? I mean, yeah. money talks, but uh, it would sure be exciting to see him up here. Uh, in a CFL training camp and, and even more so because he's on the riders uh, negotiation list. So that was an exciting name I saw on there. Yeah. I, I, to be honest, I haven't really looked at the uh, negotiation list uh, in depth. I, I saw it on, uh, on uh, Instagram as I was scrolling and um, <clears throat> yeah, from what, from what you're telling me here, I'm going to have to go and watch some of these highlights from, yeah. from all of these guys, if I can, you know? Um, yeah. It's nice to see some possible CFL talent that may come here and play at, at some yeah, point in their yeah. career. And, yeah, you know, we, we can get the inside scoop on them before they come up here, you know? Yes, sir. <laughs> All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that pretty much does it for uh, this edition of the Rider Review podcast. Uh, podcast. Um, thank you guys so much for watching, listening, viewing, and subscribing. Uh, wherever you decide to listen, whether that be on uh, Spotify now or YouTube. Um, make sure you guys leave us a like, um, rate us five stars on Spotify. And we will see you guys next week after the writers hopefully take down the Edmonton Elks.